Okay. Awesome. Uh, that mustache is incredible, Alejandro. I got to say. Thank you. It's yeah. Beautiful. So there we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Give me one second. Let me get the questions right up here. Okay. Hi. Okay. Um, hi. Uh, my name is Alejandro Rengo. I'm from the Nerdy Basement. I'm here with Peter Stone. Uh, thank you for joining me today. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to get a chance to talk to you. Yeah, awesome. Um, well, let's talk about Sox, the character you played in the movie Lightyear. Uh, what inspired you to use the voice that you use for this character? Um, it was working with Angus McLean, the director, and trying to find some of the the, the, the couple sides of Sox. And uh, um, um, you know, we both have a love for science fiction movies, and uh, you know, between C three PO and and uh, you know uh, the droids in the world and androids, you know, uh, they all had a little bit of an ingredient to it. One in particular was. Uh, from Star Trek data from the Star Trek Next Generation, this gentle android, because uh, Angus would always talk about like, you know, it's a protocol comp companion, a personal companion robot that was part of a military aspect, you know, and so there was something about data that was always like, yes, Captain, you know, and so there was this mm -hmm. gentle, you know, like, uh, we are now approximately, we are now arriving at, so there was this tone, but then there was the friend side to um, um, socks as well, where it's like, hey, Buzz, you want a snack cake? And so there was like this other side that was more friendly. And uh, Angus would talk about like, yeah, there's the serious side to him, but there he's also there to help um, um, Buzz out throughout the years when time is, is shifting for him. And so it was trying to find that balance uh, uh, of those two pieces with what they needed uh, as it was a big part. It was really fun because when I saw it, I, I imagined Data was one of the inspirations, but I may, I always imagined like a wholesome how, you know, from like- Yeah, yeah exactly. totally, totally, yeah, yes. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's sort of like a little faster than the, that speed of how of like, yeah. yes, Dave, you know, like, but a little a little faster. Yeah, we talked about yeah. all of that, like, yeah. yeah it's really fun. Um, what was voice work something that, um, that you pictured doing before and during your time at Pixar? No, I, I never thought I would ever do it. I, um, or, or have the chance to it. It was, I think it just came out of story pitching, um, um, Alejandro. So when you're doing the boards and then you would pitch the scene, you would be doing the voices for the characters. You'd be like, oh, and then so um, Bob Parr comes in and they're just like, Helen, and then you'd go like, oh, Bob, you know, and you do these voices as you're pitching the story. And uh, um, I think it came out of that where Brad had asked me to play uh, a mugger in the first Incredibles and uh, um, I owe it to Brad. Like he, he pulled me in a, a couple voices there. And then for Ratatouille, he pulled me in for the rat. And he was just like, mm -hmm. you know, we need um, 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 someone that loves garbage and is <laughs> chubby, I guess. I don't know, but uh, that was the beginning of all of that. That's great. So um, the majority of the audience has now experienced Lightyear, both in theaters and on Disney Plus. So what can the fans look forward to to this Blu-ray release? Oh, I think there are a lot of extras in there that are, um, uh, I think, because I don't know all the extras that were on the Disney Plus release, but I've, I've heard that there's more. And so I would be excited by that. But also like the fidelity of the Blu-ray and the HDR that capabilities from it have been like maxed to the, 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 the maxed out uh, Angus's love for um, the cinema experience, you know, him and, and, the, and the team at Dolby really made a track that I think, you know, uh, is, is more high fidelity than what's uh, going on streaming, uh, depending on the internet, you know. Is there like um, any deleted scenes included in the Blu-ray that you wish or you look forward to that you wish the fans would have seen that wasn't made in the final cut or maybe like a little improv that you did? I Well, nothing for me, but I, I'd, I'd be so curious to see how um, 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 audiences feel about the different tries that they had on socks and buzz and all, and all of those just the general sort of like different deleted scenes i'm so curious if what audiences would get like oh if they had gone that direction what would have happened you know if they had gone that direction what would have happened oh it's awesome well moving on to like elemental which is the movie that you're going to be directing is coming out next year um and it had like a presence in din 23 this past weekend uh, we got our first like official look including like the poster and the official cast news how was it presenting all of this in D23? How was that experience? Um, it was it was very proud, Alejandro. I mean, like the idea of fire and water coming together was the hook for this thing. And uh, people being really interested in that poster and some of the early imagery has been really, um, 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 
I guess, emotional for a lot of us because we've been working on it for a while, you know, and uh, trying to create characters that are effects are very difficult. And so um, what might look really easy up there, there's just a lot of sweat going on in that. And so to finally showcase that and hear the reaction from the audience was really exciting. And then like, we, we just can't wait to show more of it, you know, like mm -hmm. to get really people really interested in wanting to see it, you know, in theaters, you know, and uh, um, that, that, it, that, that it's, that the world is huge and there's a lot of stories to tell in that world, you know? Is there anything you can tell us that's like actually possible to say? Like, I don't know, like what is sort of what it's about or like the base idea? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it comes from my personal stories of of growing up in a big city and, you know, the culture clash of that, you know, um, I, I, I married someone that wasn't Korean, you know, and, and what that did to my family. And so there's a little bit of that, but then there's also about, you know, trying to make it in the city, try, you know, like how do you survive in, in a big city like this? And uh, um, uh, uh, what threats that elements might face in a, in, a, in a city like that on top of love, but also the family drama of, 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 you know, a, a legacy, you know, and there, there's so much, you know, that, I'm thankful for my parents that my parents were immigrants that came to the United States. And when I was growing up, I didn't, I wasn't appreciative of all of the things that they sacrificed. But now as I, as, as, as an adult now with kids, oh my God, I could cry right now, um, Alejandro, just telling you, like, I'm so thankful for all that they've given. And so there's a lot of those sort of emotions that are, 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 are not just about romance, but about, you know, understanding family and identity as well. I guess for the final question would be, does being a voice actor help you when it's time to direct your animated feature films? Um, yes, it, do, it does. Uh, trying to understand what the character uh, and its specific purpose in the film is being a voice actor. You really start to try to understand what that role is in the larger picture and then trying to help the performers understand how they fit into that uh, whole thing has been a lot of great lessons uh, in being a performer. And then what's respectful in terms of trying to find the characters has been, um, you know, a lot of great lessons. That's great. Um, well, Pearson, I thank you for your time and for your mm -hmm. taking out the, like the time out to like speak with me. Um, and I, I would like to remember the audience that, you know, Light Light Lightyear is coming on Blu-ray on September 13th. And it's also on Disney Plus to stream, but you know, you should buy the Blu-ray because it's gonna have a lot of nifty little features and extras for people who enjoyed the movie in theaters. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Alejandro. Thank you so much. It was great talking to you. You too.